this is your host, Rainy B, bringing you the homicidal tea. If this is your first time, welcome. And if this is not your first time, then welcome back. Today's case is going to be focused on Jennifer Bastian, and she was linked to Michelle Welch's case, which is the one that is right before this one in the playlist. So if you haven't watched that one, it's interesting to see both of these cases and how they pan out because they are related, but not. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button the same way I want to smash these perpetrators. And then let's just get started with the case. 13-year-old Jennifer Bastian disappeared on August 4, 1986. At 2.30 p.m., she left her home en route to Point Defiance Park, which was about 30 blocks away. That's mm, about five miles or so if you're from the UK and don't use blocks. But she planned on going there and coming right back. See, she was training for an upcoming YMCA bike tour on Lopez Island of the gorgeous San Juan Island. So it's something that she was pretty excited about. Now there were a ton of witnesses that saw her in the park that day and when Jennifer did not come home that evening, her family called the police. Jennifer's case is frequently linked with the murder of Michelle Welch and that's the one I previously covered. So see, four months prior to this, Michelle's body was found in a gulch at a different Tacoma park. And she was also only 12 years old when she disappeared earlier that year in March of 1986. Now, if y'all saw that other video before this one, you already know that her body was located on the same day when she was reported missing. Not the case here, but before we go that way, let's go back a little bit though. What's interesting is that in May of 1986, two months after Michelle's body was found, a man by the name of Robert Washburn called the police to report that he saw a man that resembled a crudely drawn police sketch that was shown on the public TV for newscasts to help drum up some leads. Now, Robert said that he'd seen this composite sketch of the suspect and recognized him as a fellow jogger out at that park. That, for some reason, sent detective spidey senses tingling and it put him on the radar from that point forward. Now, three months later on, August 4th, Jennifer Bastian went missing, and it wasn't until three weeks later, on August 26, 1986, that searchers found her body in a wooded area between Five Mile Drive and Commencement Bay. Jennifer was indecently assaulted, and she was strangled, and she was hidden beneath brush near a trail. Her Schwinn bicycle was also found near the crime scene. Scent tracking dogs were able to track Bastion's scent from her home to the park around Five Mile Drive. And that meant that she made at least one lap around the park before she was kidnapped. Now in December of that same year, detectives re-interviewed Robert Washburn at his Tacoma apartment. He again stated that he saw someone that looked like the suspect in the Welch case that was jogging near him a few months after the sketch was shown on TV. His story did not change which is something that frequently happens with guilty suspects, which is, I'm sure, something y'all know because you watch as much true crime TV that, as I do. So, yeah, we kind of know those weird little factoids. Well, the investigators backed off a little, but not that much. Like I said in Michelle's case, detectives believe 1,000% Michelle's and Jennifer's case were linked and that they were killed by the same man due to the similarities in the cases. But in 2016, they were able to test the DNA found at Jennifer's crime scene and ran it through a state and federal database. But there were no hits, and it also didn't match the DNA profile recovered in Michelle's case. So in 2016, cold case detectives, including the power duo team of Detective Gene Miller and Lindsey Wade, I wish I could hug them, I love them, they were working on the murders, and they made a list of suspects whose DNA they needed. Washburn, once again, who was now living in Eureka, Illinois, uh, he was on that list. And when they contacted him for DNA, he agreed. Oh, FBI, why don't you come on over and do a little buckle swab? In May, the lab results came back, and guess what? It was a match. In 1986, he had lived less than five miles from Point Defiance Park and nine blocks from Jennifer Bastian's house when she disappeared in 1986. Boom, that's enough physical and circumstantial evidence for the DA's office to craft a pretty solid case against a Washburn. Tacoma police, assisted by the Illinois State Police, arrested Washburn without incident in his home in Eureka, Illinois. On January 25th, 2019, Washburn pled guilty to the first degree murder of Jennifer Bastion, and in saying that, it clearly demonstrates that the district attorney's office was more than capable to present a case to the defense that the state's case was strong enough to prove first degree murder. In other words, the state could prove beyond any reasonable doubt that he planned to 
premeditatively orchestrate little Jennifer's kidnapping and murder. No one would plead out to first degree murder without knowing the prosecution's case was rock solid. Premeditated child murder? What a prick! At Washburn's police statement, he detailed how he killed her. He said, I grabbed her by the hand and led her into the woods and strangled her. I do not believe that shit for one minute. It was not simply I grabbed her hand and led her anywhere. No, you fucking didn't. You hunted and stalked her like the animal that you are, and you cowardly overpowered a little girl, you piece of shit. Ah, oh, these cases. Where is that syringe of pavulon when you need it? If you don't know what that is, Google it. You know, we support that here on Homicidal Team. Anyway, Washburn also issued an apology in writing stating that he hoped that his sentencing would bring the Bastion family one step closer in their healing process. Oh cool, how's that gonna happen? You have a way to bring her back? Do you have a way to make up for those 30 years that you stole from her parents and her siblings? No! So until then, shut the fuck up! These guys who try to make themselves feel better by lame-ass apologies fucking piss me off. What is somewhat good is that he was sentenced to 27 years in prison. Not that that was even as long as she'd been missing, but that's a plea bargain for you. He is currently serving his sentence at Washington State Penitentiary and will probably be there to the end of his pathetic life. And hopefully that will end sooner than later. And I googled to see if they were on the uh, lethal injection kill them off list and they're not but whatever i'm never moving there on a different ethereal note something i found researching this case is that there are actually a ton of websites that are devoted to haunted roads and haunted places and jennifer bastion is associated with one of these spooky places supposedly five mile drive in the park where jennifer bastion's life was taken over 34 years ago is rumored to be one of those haunted roads Apparently, after dusk, you can see a little girl walking around or riding her bike in the area. Now, people that have claimed to see her have seen a young girl leaning on her bike, and whenever they ask her if she needs any help, they realize that she has an eerie smile and blank eyes. Terrified, they run away, only to turn around and the vision is gone. This is my take on it. You guys really think that in all the glory and unimaginable joy that happens when you transcend this world to the next, that... The astral entities are just going to hang around and pester and scare the living. I mean, I would bet anything that it's just remaining negative energy from what happened combined with people's desire to amalgamate the energies beyond this plane. But those are my two cents. I mean, you ain't got to agree with me. I just ask that you respect that I have a different opinion than you and you don't roll that way. So cool. You know, somewhere at whatever age that Jennifer Bastian is choosing to experience her present, she's probably giggling at the fact that people are afraid of her presence. I mean, in every indication about her demeanor that I read, causing discomfort on any level is like the last thing that she would want to do. So, but have fun out there looking for your spooky stuff if that's your bag, baby. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it so much. If you want to help me out, please smash that subscribe button the same way you want to smash Robert Washburn and hit that like button too. It helps the channel. It really does. And if you want to see more videos like this one, click here. And if you want to see longer ones, click here. And if you want to subscribe, click there. <laughs> Thanks again. Bye.